Hey everyone, my name is Chantelle and welcome to another video. This month has two Fridays, so I'm creating another Matchbox diorama for you this week, which is the 13th in the series. If you would like to catch up on all the other ones, I will leave a link in the iCard section. So let's see what the 13th Harry Potter Matchbox diorama will be. That's all the previous ones, by the way, for people that are new here. And it will be Gringotts Wizarding Bank. Let's get started. As always, I'm starting off with a matchbox I make myself with a website that you can find in the description box below. I am gluing together the main part of the matchbox and I should not have done that because I am cutting out windows later on. The upload for this video is a little bit late this week. However, you will understand why a little bit later in this video. This matchbox is going to be an interesting one because the side can be completely taken off and is held together by magnets. But let's start off by painting the outside of the matchbox gray. I am going to do my measurements of the windows with a popsicle stick. And you might think, why a popsicle stick? Well, because this is just the perfect size and arch for the windows for Gringotts. So I'm tracing around three times on the outside of the matchbox on both sides and then going to cut them out. Because I already put the matchbox together, this is a little bit tricky, but I'm going to make it happen anyway without taking it apart again, just by supporting my hand on a little notepad that I have lying around and just being very careful with the cuts. Now that is done, I'm going to trace out arches that are going to be the window sills and the window frames around the windows. And I'm going to cut around on the inside and on the outside of the actual size of the windows. And this is how they will sit around the windows. If you've been following this matchbox series, you know I like to use acetate for the windows. And this is uh, not an exception, of course. And I'm just cutting out some acetate here. And before I'm gluing it on the back of the frame, I'm going to paint the frames black, sand the windows themselves so they look frosted, and then gluing them into place. I nearly forgot about the window ledges that I made as well. So I'm just measuring out some window ledges here. Those are the base ledges of the windows and then painting them black as well. So here's just a little handy tip. I'm working with some washi tape, putting the two paint pieces on some tape so they stay put, especially when they're so small and you can just paint them and then take them off when they're dry. So like I said before, just sanding the acetate here on both sides so it becomes frosted, then gluing them on the window frame and then gluing it all on the diorama. Before I'm gluing the rest of the window frames on the inside of the building, I wanted to, of course, paint the inside. And I am starting off with a like a beige kind of color. And then I'm going to go in with a Sharpie marker. This is because Sharpie markers are just so versatile when it comes to miniatures. I am just painting on or drawing on in this case, the pattern of the wall. It's like a marbly kind of brown stone feature wall that is in Gringotts and painting the 
pattern in different shades of a kind of dark chocolate brown and a what is it like orangey kind of brown then I'll continue the process of the window frames and the window sills on the inside of the building. Moving on to the floor. The floor in Gringotts is very geometrically shaped. Uh, it has circles, it has triangles, and I'm not going with the exact pattern of the floor in the movie. However, I'm trying to convey the same look and feel. What you will also see in this diorama is that it won't be the full size interior of Gringotts. The bank is huge and I cannot possibly put that into a matchbox this size. Then for the floor, the final finishing touches is just me going in with some watercolors to bring out those light tan tones that the floor has and then gluing it into place. We're not done with the interior yet. The interior of Gringotts has pillars. So from very thick skewers, I am cutting them to size, trying them to make sure they fit properly, and then going to put the same pattern that I put on the walls on the pillars as well. Before I do that, however, you can see what I'm doing here. Again, with the same Sharpie marker, I am going to Put some patterns on the windows before I forget and cannot reach in there anymore. Okay, back to the pillars. I've got the pillars that I want inside the building cut to size and now I'm just going to apply that same pattern that I have on the walls on the pillars as well and then painting them with the same paints. These are just normal acrylic paints. They are for min meant for miniatures, um, but I l really, really like these paints and they lay down very evenly. They level out themselves and they apply to any surface imaginable. They are acrylic paints and um, I think the brand that I'm using is Vallejo and Green Stuff World paints. But yeah, um, that's the paints that I prefer to use. I have cheaper paints as well that I use on occasion. And then putting all those pillars in and to make them stand out a little bit more, I'm going to apply a gloss varnish to these pillars. Because of the gloss varnish, it brings them out so much more. Let's go to the outside of the building. The outside of Gringotts at the front has a little dome shaped roof and I'm trying to create that here with polymer clay. Just a little addition to the matchbox. I have cut a bowl in half which makes the dome and then going to lay over these little snakes of clay to make the ridges in the rooftop. To make it a little bit more fancy, I'm going to wrap some snakes of clay around the base of the dome. Going back to the interior of this diorama, I am going to create the counter that you see on either side of the bank when you walk inside or when Harry walks inside the bank. It is just a strip of cardboard. I cut off a very thin strip from the top. I'm gluing that on the side to make the first ledge on the counter. And then the top ledge has these little indents, which I'm cutting out with a hole punch and then gluing that on top of the counter. The main glue that I've used for this diorama is a wood glue. The reason for that is that I do like PVA glue. I do like my Fabri-Tac glue. But fabric tech glue is very stringy. PVA glue is good, but I find that the wood glue just adheres a little bit better. And you might have your own preference. That is totally fine. But for me, the wood glue works perfectly. Then once I've got all the bits and pieces on this counter, I'm going to paint the entire thing a brown. I also made a little counter that sits at the very end where Hagrid 
gives his key in the first movie. And that's what you see me paint here. Then I'm going to dry brush some lighter brown on top of the finished piece and giving it a very slight glossy top coat. Now that is all done, I'm going to glue the pieces of furniture inside the diorama. Now the scales that are on the counters are way too small for this diorama. However, I can still make the lamps. The lamp stands are made from polymer clay, just a little snake of polymer clay, baked in the oven, and then painted with this iridescent gold ink. Then on top of that little stick is a little silver bead that is the round lamp shade. And then gluing them all in with super glue. Now remember that dome that I made? Yeah, I have to hollow it out at the bottom because I want to add a magnet, which you will see me do here. Then this is upside down, but I apply a magnet on the inside and at the top. So it adheres to the top and this is the bottom of the matchbox and just applying those magnets to the bottom of the outside, which snaps in place and then that sits on top. Let's continue on the outside of the diorama. These are the stairs that lead into Gringotts Bank and I'm just attaching them to the building on the outside here. This is a piece of rectangle cardboard that is uh, the door. And then I'm painting the entire building on the outside white, including the windows that are painted black before. Of course, I cannot forget the iconic balconies on the front of the building, which is basically at the base shape of the bottom step of the building is the same shape of the balconies, the same size. And then I am applying glue on the outside of the half circle and then a strip of paper. And on top of that, another piece of half circle cardboard which makes a platform. And I'm continuing that till I'm at the top, which is three layers in total. From some skewers, I'm making these columns on the outside of the building. And this is what it looks like when all the layers are in place. Adding one more magnet so the back of the top of the box will stay put. And of course, to tie it all together, we have to paint the entire exterior white and add siding to the building as well. Then with the same gray, I'm going to age up the building here and there a little bit more, just so you get that real building feel. I did not paint the door yet, which I am doing here, which is a very dark brown. And then I'm also adding some more aging on the sides of the building and adding in some windows. And then aging up the rest of the building with some watered down acrylic. Now we get to the exciting part that I have not told you about yet. I am going to make a dragon. This was a last minute thing thought, and this is the reason, the entire reason this video is late. I am making a dragon that is super tiny out of polymer clay that will sit on top of the building. I'm starting off with a base shape uh, that looks like a giant rat. Uh, with a long neck and a very long tail and then cutting open the mouth adding in the eyes and then slowly adding all the details this was very tiny and tedious it took me two hours just to make this dragon 
and I am glad I did in the end because I think I cannot top this diorama in the future. I will try to make all the future dioramas also very epic and hopefully not spend as much time as all the other dioramas as I did on this one because 14 hours on a diorama this size is nuts. So after curving out that back I am going to put in the placeholders for where the legs and the wings need to go. And then out of a snake of clay, I'm curving out this little hind leg. And he only has hind legs and his little feet, which you won't see in the end. But at least the shape is there. And this is how it will sit on the dome. Then he has spikes on his back as well. So from some super sculpy uh i think this is some um, translucent sculpey 3 not scoop super sculpey i am shaping out these little spikes for his back and then on to the wings i rolled out a flat sheet of polymer clay this is super sculpey original that i'm using here for the main body of the dragon i am su using super sculpey firm this is very hard to work with but it holds its shape very very well um, when handling very tiny items. So once the wings are cut out, as you saw me do there, I'm just adding some more details to the dragon himself and then adding the wings to his body. A few more details to his head and then I'm moving on to the spikes on his back and I am just going to put some placeholder holes there for where the spikes need to go. So I've pre-baked the spikes and then I'm going to push them into his body with some big end bond just to make sure they adhere to his back. And once the dragon is baked in the oven, this is what it looks like. And this is how I baked it in the oven. I just placed it on top of this prefab cardboard box that I, that, this was actually my product prototype of my matchbox before I started the series last year. And then I am moving on to the painting. I am brushing some gray base coat on the wings just to make it uniform and have everything one color. Then onto the body, I am putting down a very similar brownish gray kind of layer of base color and then over the top of that i will add highlights and shadows in the wings this is the shadow part that what you can see me do here which is a, a very thin acrylic paint And then with a beige, it's not a stark white, but just a beige, I am adding in the highlights. And this is what we have so far. I'm really happy with how this dragon is looking. And now we still have to paint that dome where he is sitting on. I'm going to use the same colors as my reference images. And my reference images are all from Universal Studios, the dragon that's sitting on top of the building. So with that done, let's see what the final result looks like. And this is it for the 13th Harry Potter Matchbox Diorama. This must be my favorite and I don't think I can top this one with the one still to come. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out. If you would like to support me, you can do so by signing up for my Patreon. You can find the link in the end card of this video or in the description box below. And if you're new here, welcome. Please don't forget you can click the subscribe button to become part of the Raven family. Thanks so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!